Welcome. Glad to see you all here. Thank God to our folks for picking such a wonderful location. We all like it? They've promised me it'll be cooler tomorrow, but we'll see. You know, every year I ended up starting the same way, that it just gets more and more interesting. Uh, every year things change. Some things stay the same. One thing that stayed the same, by the way, I don't know if some of you recall, but last year when we were in Lisbon, uh, my wife was with me. She's here with us as well this evening. And um, we have two cats at home that we really like. And while we're away, my wife and I insist on keeping track of them with a network of nest cameras throughout the house. Last year, on June 6th, we looked at the video and saw that a raccoon had invaded our domicile. <laughs> like, this is exactly what you want to see when you're traveling in Europe. So whatever, we dealt with it. Finally, the raccoon decided to go elsewhere. Which takes us to June 6th of this year. All right, we hadn't seen a raccoon in a year. And we looked at the cameras, and then again, a raccoon enters our domicile. So I don't know what's going on here, but don't be surprised if next year we hold News Guys Europe at my house in California, <laughs> because apparently it's the only way we can keep the, uh, we can keep our little friends out of our house. So yes, raccoons. They open doors, they've got opposable thumbs. I looked at him in the camera and he looked back at me and gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> what the heck? So it has been an interesting year. Of course, it's also been a, a challenging year in many regards and I think we all know that. Most significantly, we have continued to see deeply unfortunate attacks uh, in many countries on the role of the press, including my own, and on individual journalists as well. Um, and, and, and sadly, of course, in too many instances, those turned violent. This was the year where we experienced the senseless murder of, of, of Jamal Khashoggi, uh, one amongst far, far too many. Uh, but we've also continued to see the bravery of journalists across the board, uh, journalists such as Maria Ressa, who many of you know at Rappler, uh, who's joined us at many of our events and is, in, to me, is a true hero. Um, um, and should be to everyone involved in this. Uh, and as well, the Reuters journalists, uh, Wallon and, and, and Kyosao O as well. So our, our thoughts and, and prayers to them. But we've also seen, uh, fortunately, lots of positive developments in our, in our news ecosystem. Um, on the business side, you know, clearly we're seeing shifts in the business model, but we're seeing good progress. I think we're seeing excellent progress on the subscription front. I've talked to many of you here uh, tonight about it, you know, and I'm not just talking about the New York Times, which is cer doing certainly a superb job now having more than four million subs, The Guardian close to a million contributors. So great progress, but also among uh, much smaller or medium-sized news organizations who are kind of digging in deep and figuring out how to, how to make the conversion funnels work. Um, and I suspect and hope that will be a, a, one of the many topics of conversation we'll have here uh, this weekend. Also a lot of positives in local news, um, uh, uh, particularly in the area of new digital startups who are coming into new markets, I think, with a lot of fresh thinking about what it means to be a local news organization in, in this day and time. Um, you know, folks like Jeff Elgie at Village Media in Canada, who's now profitable and and approaching 20 cities that he'll be operating in by the end of the year. News 24 in Italy, quite similarly. Um, Berkeley side in Berkeley, California. In fact, uh, Lance uh, 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 is here from Berkeley side and, and um, hope we have some really good and healthy discussions about approaches to local news. Um, frankly, it's an area that I feel quite optimistic about. Um, and I think, as some of you know, an area that with our Google News Initiative, we're putting a, a, a really substantial focus on, both in terms of supporting the development of specific platforms for local, uh, through WordPress, through Village Media, 
uh, but also looking to drive experimentation such that there are increasingly great playbooks for the next set of entrepreneurs or news organizations looking to figure out how to make this significant shift. We've also seen uh, a rather interesting and dramatic increase in political focus on all dimensions of the Internet. Uh, while this is understandable, given that governments, I think, are now recognizing that the Internet is indeed replacing or has replaced the central nervous systems of our societies, of our cultures, of our industries, of our media spaces, of our political spheres. Um, um, a lot of positives there, but also a, a lot of interesting uh, challenges there as well. Um, I suspect that over the next few years, we're going to see very interesting challenges in discussion about the very nature of free expression um, and how does one manage free expression um, in our modern world. Uh, in fact, if I can make a, a side note here, I, you know, over the last two years, I sat on uh, the Knight Commission for Trust, Media, and Democracy. And, and out of that, uh, one of the things I picked up, it was a, 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 an extraordinarily poignant uh, 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 statement. In the United States, as you know, we've got this thing called the First Amendment, and we've got this thing called the Second Amendment. First Amendment about free speech, Second Amendment about right to bear arms. And the poignant comment was this, is the internet to the First Amendment what the AK-47 is to the Second? The underlying point being that you know, we all operate in our societies under legally constructed freedoms but the true health of our societies is really based on our norms, right? How do we use the freedoms that we have in positive, constructive ways? Because our freedoms can also be used in deeply negative ways. So how do we deal with the fact that the First Amendment, given the internet, um, 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 you know, can and has and is being used by nefarious players? So interesting challenges, and, I start, and that is only one of them. Uh, again, it's understandable uh, that governments are taking a closer look at the Internet. It makes perfect sense. I think the challenge for all of us, um, Google, publishers, civil society people, is, is, is doing our best to uh, understand how to deal with that, um, how to deal with these, in, in a sense, well-motivated desires for change versus some of the ill-motivated efforts to control or damage the internet or free expression. And, and certainly we're seeing that around the world as well as in Europe, and, and, and you know that better than I do. Um, specifically at Google, um, it's, I think it's been a very good year for us, or at least I'm comfortable that we're making good progress. Um, and it's progress, a mission by no means accomplished. As I mentioned earlier, positive developments in the subscription space and subscribe with Google has given us, I think, a really excellent opportunity not only to work with publishers but to develop our own better understanding of what kind of tools can be created and used to build efficient conversion funnels, to build a better understanding of propensity to pay and so on and so forth. All those good things that over time I think will really help drive success in subscription models. Um, we've also began new series of innovation challenges. We recently finished one in uh, Latin America and just opened a fresh one in North America, our first innovation challenge in North America. And of course, back on the legal side, we've also seen bruising tussles, as it were, in Europe over copyright. <laughs> Uh, where we certainly agree with the principle that copyright needs to be updated for the 21st century, uh, but continue to be considerably concerned about the unintended consequences uh, if, if such laws are, are interpreted or used for, uh, in, in, in create, as I said, unfortunate secondary consequences. The details will matter. Uh, and over the next six months, year, we'll be digging into that quite deeply. From our perspective at Google, and I'm sure we'll have many discussions about this, our objective will be, you know, how do we respectfully uh, or be respectful about copyright, but also make sure that to all of our interests, the internet continues to be a rich, diverse, equitable, principled, and open uh, environment. Uh, so again, very interesting questions as, as we all deal with the challenges of the internet's impact on our societies. 
I didn't mean to make this so serious, but sometimes there are serious things to discuss. I do come into this newsgeist, um, as I have for every one that we've done over the last six or seven years, uh, still absolutely convinced that despite all the challenges, despite all the issues, uh, that we do have a bright future in front of us. Um, uh, because I just, I, I think the opportunities to do things in new different ways, the capabilities to do those things in different ways are there. I'm also convinced that the way through those challenges is not through doom and gloom mongering, but uh, in shouts that the industry is dying, but through intelligent discourse, how do we learn from each other? How do we develop understanding of what can work and what not? Um, uh, how do we get out of looking in the rearview mirror and instead look through that windshield and find the path forward? Um, and we're seeing, again, good progress there. Um, thoughtful action and a constant reevaluation and experimentation, I think, is the only path uh, to success. And that's what these are about. So I'll, I'll close with that. You know, as, as you know, um, I've actually had folks, I, 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 someone, some pundit in the United States uh, said, oh, Newsgeist are just a marketing event. Um, I'm going to let you judge. Um, I have never looked at these nor operated them as marketing events. You might notice just a subtle thing that there are no Google logos anywhere. I could give a fuck about marketing at this event. Pardon my French. Um, uh, you know, that's a quote, by the way, from Frederic Filou. He was at my house for dinner one night, and he said, fuck, and he apologized, and he said, pardon my French. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it is, it, is, it is all about the discussion. Um, you know, so many good, productive, innovative efforts have come out of the discussions we've had at Newsgeist. So I thank you all for being here. I thank you all for, for, for lending um, the best of your thinking. Um, um, and participating in, in, in respectful and productive conversations over the next uh, two days. And yes, there will be werewolf. And with that, I'm going to introduce Chris Shipley. Where is Chris? There is Chris, who needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyways. Chris, as you know, has been our curator of news guys for nearly ever. Um, we now do four of these a year, um, and, and Chris works for magic and making sure that we have the right kind of people here, um, and that we put together an event that is um, increasingly productive and enjoyable. So, Chris, thank you very much. Setting the bar at productive and enjoyable now has made different plans for my weekend. You know, usually in an event, you come to the last day and the last session, and that's when an organizer says, thank you all for coming. I like to do that right up front, so thank you all very much for coming. Um, if you were not here, there would be no Newsgeist, because I hope, as you know, you're all bringing Newsgeist and the content uh, to the table for the weekend. If I could have the slides that I gave you, Alex, that would be helpful. I just want to spend a little bit of time very quickly. I know that it's me standing between you and dinner and more drinks, so we're not going to take this uh, too long, but I want to give you a sense of how the weekend is going to unfold and really importantly, what's going to happen among you over our dinner hour and into the evening. Uh, because this is an unconference and having spent many years uh, organizing executive conferences where the task was to curate content and hope that the right people show up. Uh, Newsgeist is all about curating people and hoping that the right content shows up. So I'm hoping that you all packed some great content. I want to take you through kind of how we put the schedule and the sessions together uh, so that, that you um, know how you'll be able to participate and contribute uh, across the weekend. Before I do that, though, there are two really important things. And, and if you've suffered through enough of my emails, even farther beyond the signature line into the PS, you know that I um, will often remind you that Newsguys is operated under Chatham House Rule. Chatham House Rule is very simple. Come here, share openly anything that you're comfortable sharing. Take away any information that's useful and valuable to you. You may not, however, attribute it to the speaker or the speaker's organization without their permission. 
So this is a place that we want, where we want ideas to flow openly and productively. And to do that, sort of removing that idea of attribution, I think will allow for us to be a little more free-flowing with our thoughts. And so that is why we use Chatham House Rule. The second thing that's essential to making sure that this weekend works very well for everyone is our code of conduct. Um, you are all here regardless of your time in the industry, your position in your organizations, uh, the role that you have uh, in the industry. You're here as peers. And, and there is no rank, there is no order. You are here to work together, to collaborate together as peers. Um, we want this to be a place where people feel comfortable to be full contributors. And where there are instances where there is discomfort, that's where you need to talk to me, and I will do my best to um, change the situation and make sure that we're all a place, the News Guys is a place where we conduct ourselves with the higher standards of ethics that we bring to our own jobs um, with great respect for one another. I think it's out of that that we have uh, a really productive uh, and um, most worthwhile event. So uh, there are copies of our Code of Conduct of Chatham House all throughout the facilities that we're using this weekend. If you haven't um, spent a moment with them, please do, just so that you know the kind of environment we're trying to create so that we can be absolutely most productive here. So many of you asked in advance about the schedule or the agenda, and, and you should have received an email that had a link to what essentially looked like a spreadsheet that I didn't give a damn to fill in. Um, I will give that damn tonight after you all um, go off to the late night activities. But I didn't know what to put in it because you haven't told me yet. And that's really what an unconference is all about. So tonight at dinner, um, and maybe you, some of you saw in, in the bags that you were given, you have post-it notes. Right? That is the heart of Newsgeist in many ways. The post-it note is a place where you will present to, to all of us, but through the vehicle of me putting the schedule together later on tonight, the ideas, the titles of sessions you would like to, um, you, you want to talk about. So all you need to do on that post-it is give your session some kind of a title that suggests what you want to speak about. Um, to say, I want to talk about trust, it's a pretty big topic, and it comes up often at Newsguys, but what is your particular concern or issue uh, that you want to, uh, that you want to shape a conversation around about uh, around tr uh, this issue of trust. Right? I, we see, we want to talk about media literacy. Well, that's it's interesting, and, and Jeff uh, in the back will say, this is stupid, nobody cares about media literacy. I think that's what you usually scrumble to me, don't you, Jeff? Media literacy, who cares? Um, well, it turns out a lot of people care, but it's easier to care if we have an understanding of what angle you want to take on it. So give your, your, your post-it note uh, a headline that we can construct a real a schedule around by understanding more what are the, the comparative conversations around any given session. The other thing that's super important is to own your idea. To be a session leader does not mean that you have to prepare a speech or do a PowerPoint or do much more than just be the person in the room who starts the conversation and be the person in the room who ensures that the voices around the table, around the circle can be heard. It does not require really any heavy list lifting. But if there is a post-it note with a great idea but no owner of it, we may not be able to put it on the schedule. So I really want to care, we really care about the fact that these ideas attach to people who are passionate about them enough that they want to lead a conversation. All right, so title and your name, or maybe it's somebody else you've convinced to be a leader. Um, I will tell you that it is not Richard or Madov unless you have talked to them about it. And it turns out that we get mountains of post-it notes with wonderful topics, and Richard's become the leader of all of them. And while he is a prolific producer of great ideas, not so much on the news guy's post-it notes. So that's usually my first clue that it's not actually Richard's idea, that somebody thinks that Richard should lead it. If you and Richard have collaborated, and he said, yes, I will partner with you to, read that, to lead that session, well, God bless you for getting that commitment and put your own name by it as well so that we know who's all in on that. All right? So that's the Richard rule. I have news, guys. So what, what kinds of things make a good session? It really is anything that you want to talk about, um, something you're curious about, that's something that's happening in your organization. You want to find out if others are having these experiences. 
um, challenges that are getting in the way of you producing or moving forward or, or, or moving your business where it needs to be, your, your, your media product taking it into new directions. Some people want to talk about what are the new, what new technologies open up new opportunities for greater monetization of their product or opening, reaching new audiences. Those things are all open and not just to say, here's what we have done, but we're exploring it. Who else has done this so that we can learn from, from, those, from one another and collaborate together? Um, often there are issues that are just, these things are, are really exciting me and, our, and people in my organization, or they're really upsetting us and we just need a place to vent with our peers. That can be a great topic and discussion as well. Um, we also sort of, what have you learned? What experiments are you doing in your organization that you can share results back so that, that individuals here can take away um, some real thought leadership from you? Any of those things and, and hundreds of more things can be a good session topic. What I would encourage you to do is not self-edit in this regard. If there's something that you think, I'd like to have a conversation with my peers, go ahead and put it on the post-it note. It'll be my job tonight to aggregate all of those notes and figure out which are similar enough that they're a single session or which really stand out and should be a session on their own. And occasionally, which ideas are so left field that we're gonna leave those for the, op, uh, the ad hoc sessions and you all can uh, gather around on your own uh, if it doesn't make it onto the board. And that's really, the making it onto the board is what tonight is all about. Um, when you come back from dinner, there will be a series of easels in the back of the room uh, to make the job of creating the schedule a little bit easier. Uh, those easels will have topics on them. The, the business of, of newsroom operations, I don't remember exactly what they are, how I worded them all, but uh, education, policy and practice. Please, if your, your post-it note kind of sounds like it belongs in one of those categories, go ahead and put it on uh, that poster board because that, again, will help us organize more efficiently tonight. If it's a topic that it doesn't sound like it falls into the, any of those categories, there's a miscellaneous board and post it there and we'll um, consider all of those as well. But it'll just help us streamline the process as we turn all those post-it notes into uh, the agenda. When you um, wake up tomorrow morning, you will have in your inbox uh, a, another reminder, a, a link to the schedule. It's actually the same schedule document that you already have, but I'll send it to you again so that you'll be able to have on your mobile device the schedule for the day. We'll also keep the schedule boards um, out and available, so we'll probably want to have them in, in or near the breakfast area tomorrow. The reason we use post-it notes is because they're portable. Right? Uh, listen, you have me down in a session at noon, or at, at 11, uh, this one, but I really need to go to this other one. Can we move things around? And so tomorrow at breakfast, we'll be uh, figuring out, did we get you know, 70%, 80%, 90% of the way there to what, what you wanted to, to do or discuss? Are there conflicts? We can move post-it notes. It's not a problem to do that. Um, I would just ask that you, I'll be there at the boards tomorrow morning. Uh, I want to watch how they tr transform so I can make sure that it gets put back into the electronic document. And then after breakfast tomorrow, that electronic document will be by the most accurate schedule of, of what topics are happening in what rooms. So you want to, um, uh, to have that. Of course, we'll keep the boards up to date as well. Um, sometimes a session doesn't make it onto the topic. Or, as you know, we're having Ignite Talks tonight and tomorrow night might spark some entirely new idea. We can always create more sessions. This is a huge facility with lots of interesting little conversation nooks. So if, if a topic you really want to talk about isn't on the, the official schedule, um, create an ad hoc topic. And that is just to say, on the post-it board, um, you know, at, at this particular time, I would like to meet in uh, the coffee cafe and we'll talk about this new topic. So again, this is a, an organic schedule. It's one where you really vote with, with your feet and post-it notes. So you go into a room tomorrow and it's, you thought the conversation was gonna be about this and it turns out it's not. No one will be offended much um, if, you, um, if you get up and you go somewhere else. That's just what this is all about. There's a ton of stuff you'll realize is we have, if I'm remembering correctly, nine sessions across two days, six to eight, um, conversations to participate in any one of those. There's a, a lot to talk about, and you're not obviously going to be able to take in everything. Um, 
So if you find yourself feeling like this is not a place where I want to contribute, that's okay. Just go on and, and find yourself in another room or grab some people into an ad hoc session and make that happen. So that's, I think, how we, we put this all together. I know how we put it all together. Um, and if you have questions about that or the schedule, please, that's why I'm here. And you should all have uh, my email, which is curator at newsgeist.org, which is probably the fastest way to find me over the next 48 hours. I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, work and modify schedule as we need to. So let me take you through what's going to happen tonight uh, through the rest of our evening. Um, we are going to go to dinner, uh, which will be, there's stairs that are off the patio that go down to the pool. So we'll be eating, having dinner around the pool. Um, you will have your post-it notes and that's where you want to, to start creating your, your, um, your session ideas, starting to document those. We had thought about putting the boards down there, but it turns out that wind and post-it notes are not um, very compatible. And wind and post-it notes in a swimming pool definitely don't work. Um, and so rather than waiting through the pool picking up all your great ideas, we decided, you know, bring them back here after dinner and then you'll put them on the board and, and we'll work from there. So uh, dinner now and then we'll have a series of Ignite Talks. We have seven of your peers who, who uh, among a group tomorrow as well, raise their hands and said, I've got something I'd like to share. Um, and so we have uh, seven talks tonight uh, that will go for a bit after dinner and I think inspire some additional thinking for our sessions. And then uh, that will be followed by late night. Um, you have heard, and many of you, it was great, by the way, to see so many first-time attendees. Um, you obviously have already heard Richard talk about there will be werewolf. Um, and there will be, and it will be, uh, I'm sure, as fabulous as it always is, a great way to, to get to know your colleagues here at the event. Um, and it's kind of tough. I know if you don't know werewolf or you haven't played before, it might feel like, how do I break into Werewolf? Um, so we will open in our first um, uh, first hour or so of the late night, um, we'll do a, at least one or two kind of newcomer sessions so you can, it's the, it's, you can come and kill each other without anyone uh, who's killed somebody before knowing is kind of what that means. Um, and I know that for other people, this idea that I'm going to come together and I'm going to kill my peers is rather offensive. I don't understand it, but I, I, I do understand that some people find it un, uh, disquieting. Uh, late night is not just about uh, news guys. It's an opportunity to come together, to, to meet and talk very casually. Um, we'll have the bar open on the patio. There's seating uh, around. Come have another drink. Uh, stay up as long as you wish. Maybe kind of from afar look at news, uh, the werewolf games if you like. And if you don't like, that's fine too, but we don't want you to have to buy your own drinks. So come on out and, and join us on the patio for that. And we will do that until basically we can't stand it anymore. The jet lag kicks in and you feel like I have to collapse and go have a quick sleep before uh, we start tomorrow morning. Um, but that's uh, what's on the agenda. And um, I will look forward to seeing the topics you come up with uh, later on. But for now, um, enjoy your meal, enjoy one another's company. Um, document your ideas and listen to this one last thing that Madoff has to say. Thank you, Chris. It, she is the magic. The fun, one thing before we go to, 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 uh, to the food and the drinks. This is all about you. So can you do me a personal favor and meet a few people you've never met before, including a few people outside your own country? Because I suspect... Not that I'm looking at the British guys there in the row, boys. <laughs> that you're all grouping around your own countries. But we have so much in common, so please try and find people that you don't know from outside your own nation, even the United Kingdom. So, with that, let's go eat. <laughs>